welcome to Tampa. We have got a little update here on the ATR and I figured that is the perfect excuse to take the pink airplane that has a flamingo on the tail and do a quick run down the Florida coast and head on down to uh, Key West. A real world flight, I think, uh, that Silver Airlines uh, does with this airplane. And hello and welcome to the channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Dave. I do the spy flight over on Twitch, except for this week and part of next week, which I'm on jury duty. So I don't get to do what I really love to do. And I saw that there was an update and I just had to jump in the airplane because, you know, being away for just a couple of days uh, is kind of, uh, made it pretty clear that I really miss uh, getting to check in with sim flying friends and also I uh, really missing my simulated airplanes too I really do so this is just a really really quick flight I've only briefly glanced at the change log on this airplane and so we'll see how it's working uh, there is a really nice flow pro uh, uh, widget that you can use to load this airplane uh, we do need to go and I believe you need to delete it is one thing I needed to do delete and then re-add it so once you do that you got to come back here and click this and then redrag that in there so I think you have to do that in there uh, each time too okay so uh, we, we'll use flow pro to load the airplane uh, let's see let's also we can load in uh, simbrief downloader works now did you know that oh and you weren't getting to see me do anything with flow pro because I forgot that, uh, you know, I had the camera. Sorry about that. I'm rusty. Okay, let's go and uh, get a SimBrief downloader and uh, plug this in. And this is gonna go get the flight plan. You know all about SimBrief downloader, right? Uh, this is something free you get with SimBrief. You can set it up with the Leonardo, the PMDG, and a bunch of other airplanes And I've set it up here at Microsoft. You need to go and put this in admin, app data, local packages uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so that's where you go and put your file and that should do it. I should probably put a link to that in the description and I am copying and pasting that and I will put a link to uh, where it is you're supposed to put it if you bought this from the Microsoft Store. If you bought it from Steam, you have to do the little Steam adjustment there too. Okay, all right, so what are the other things that I've done here? I did go and download charts and have done the flight plan and everything is ready to go. So uh, as we come over here, we are over at uh, Tampa. Actually, I think they need to do a little fixing of Tampa here because I think that Silver, I think that they depart in here. I think that Silver, so they need to add the uh, Silver Gates down here. I'm not sure, I just, I think that's, uh, I'm trying to f find out for sure. Uh, right now, it does look like uh, Real World is departing off of 01 right. So this is pretty simple for us. We could probably even do an interse intersection departure at uh, Juliet, maybe even. Uh, so we could do that. Uh, and then we have the Tampa departure. So we basically go all the way up north. And then uh, uh, to the south, we're uh, doing the Sarasota transition. So SRQ transition. So loop-de-loop -loop probably out over the ocean and maybe we'll blow off uh, S, uh, the SRQ VOR. And then coming in, our last waypoint is Sting. We got the RNAV approach to runway nine. It's gonna be a little bit dark coming in, but hopefully not too dark. Got real world weather pl uh, plugged in and that should be good to go too. Now then, let's talk a little bit about Flow Pro. You can get it at Orbix. It's really cool. And one of the people who flies with us over on the spy flight all the time on Twitch is Tim Dog. And Tim Dog has done really, really cool um, widgets. And so uh, this is the one that Tim Dog has made for this airplane to make loading it a breeze. Just click it. And sim brief. ID is not set. Oh, that's right, because I updated it. So I, you gotta put your sim brief ID in. So hold it in there and then put your sim brief username and ID. And that should do that. Now let's try it again. And now it should get it right. Click, nope, don't click it like that again. Let's just click it. Ah, loading payload. Oh, look at this. All of our stuff is in there. So right down there in the middle, our payload is good. Now you can go and get your flight plan and compare the two. So let's slide this over here and that's slide that over there, grab our flight plan. So 36 passengers, cargo is 720 kgs. That gives us a payload of 27, 2736 and that's exact. 
fuel is supposed to be 1774. That's exact. I think that this is going to work. So uh, again, this is free. You can get the widget uh, for loading this airplane at flightsim.to. Uh, you do need Flow Pro though, and you can get that. That is a payware and that's available over at Orbix. Okay, so I think we're all ready to go. Just a couple of quick things here for you. First of all, a little bit of flight information. Tampa to Key West, departing off of runway nine after Sarasota. We're on an airway down to RSW, RSW, then we're on the Victor 225. Now that Key West, uh, the EYW Key West VOR, we're gonna blow that off and we're gonna go, the last waypoint is silver. And so we'll just pick up the RNAV to runway one nine there. Simbrief says our cruise altitude should be flight level 170, 17,000 feet. This is an hour and 30 minutes flying time. And the flight distance should be about 238 miles. A couple of things about these videos that I do here. I always like to mention this is not about doing it the right way versus the wrong way. This is merely what I figured out works for me. Uh, I've been doing flight simming for a very long time. I've also been doing an awful lot of um, uh, a little bit of live streaming, but a lot of flight simming. I do have a private pilot's license, uh, but this is what works for me. And hopefully the uh, whole goal of this is this is what's gonna work for you so that you can get this cool little airplane up in the air to cruise, land, and, uh, and, and enjoy the beach at Key West, right? So let's go ahead and uh, hop in the best seat in the house. And the best seat is right here. We're gonna go down here to the aircraft. First thing I'm gonna do is get ground power plugged in and I'm gonna open my cargo and my main door. So we got a cargo door and a main door open right now and that takes care of those. We've already loaded the flight plane so it's time to start doing what sim pilots live for and that's flipping switches and sim airplanes. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So main battery goes on, should start making some noise. Yep, starting to make a little bit of noise here. Hey, look at that, they fixed the uh, uh, light switches. So we're gonna turn on the nav lights. It's getting dark. I'm gonna turn on the logo light. And if we'll look up here, we'll see that we have ground power. Let's pop that in too. And ground power is now engaged. And so with ground power engaged, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn these up just a little bit. And that way we've got really nice backlighting on the control panel, on the upper panel. If you look outside, you can see we got a really cool uh, logo light back there. Now then, if you want cap cabin lights, that's going to be over here and that's going to turn on the cabin lights and wow, does that make things bright. But that's okay, so the passengers can get on for get on right now. Okay, so all of this is good. While the, um, while the LCD systems are all starting to power up now, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do what they call clear all the white lights. And that is the DC generators. We're going to pop those on right now. We're gonna also come over here and turn on uh, windshield heat. I'm gonna go turn on the wild uh, electric power generators. I'm also gonna kick on the hydraulic power and we're gonna kick on main oxygen. Okay, so we got those on right now and all of this is looking good. And I think that's gonna do it for the moment. The next thing that we can do is we can come down here and the FMS is looking pretty good. Now, I don't know that this thing is actually active, the one on the co-pilot side. We'll play with that one, it's uh, airplane time. So let's come on over here. And there is our system. This is the two version two. So one of the things is, is uh, you don't have to do the position in it. It does it for you. So the next thing for us to do is, I usually go over here and I'm gonna hit the flight plan in it button and go to the res, uh, route page. And since we downloaded the flight plan through uh, Simbrief, we can go and just import the route directly in. So that's gonna be Tampa, K, T, P, A. It's been a long week, I have to spell everything out. And we're going to K, E, Y, W, Key West. And it's only, I think today's, yeah, today's only Tuesday. It's been a long week, anyway. Okay, all this looks good, SRQ, and all of that looks great. Silver Air Flight 441, I'm gonna say that is a great flight plan. Okay, now we're gonna go into uh, the uh, flight plan itself. And after departing one way run right, SRQ, Viola, Pints, RSW. Next page, Hiccup, SIDAG, Marcy, Rigger, 
I kind of recognize this because this is a flight we normally use. And then stings, Here, there's sting right there. So there's the, this, we're gonna go ahead and this has got us set up for the non-directional beacon approach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear Key West. I'm gonna clear FIS, the non-directional beacon. I'm gonna execute it. And now we're gonna come into, let's do the airport. No, nope, that's not it. Let's go to sting. I think I need, I'm gonna clear that out too, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that too. Let's get rid of all of this stuff here. I'm gonna get rid of the missed approach because that's gotta go away. And get rid of this. And let's go ahead and execute that. Now then, so what we gotta do is we gotta, we gotta tell it what a, the destination is so we can change it. Now maybe I'm doing this wrong, but what I've learned that you do is go to your last waypoint click it and then choose a new destination, even though it's the same destination. So K E Y W and put that into new destination and execute it. Okay, let's go back to return and let's go back to the top of the flight plan. So all of this is the same. Now it could be that they fixed all this and I'm doing it wrong. Hmm, doesn't seem to have done any good for me, does it? There's Sting, let's try it again. New destination, K-E-Y-W. New destination, and execute. Return, Key West, there we go. Now that's in there, let's go back a page. Okay, now you notice that um, the last checkpoint that we had before has disappeared. So we do have to put that back in. So get the RNAV and that RNAV is Sting. So we have to put this back in, S-T-I-N-G. Put that on top of Key West. Uh, S-T-I-N-G, do I not know how to spell? S T I. G, sting. Ah, there it is. And let's see, I think it is a waypoint. It's not a TW point. Let's grab this one. Okay, execute that. Now that we've done this, now we can go and put in the approach that we want. So Key West, and we're doing the RNAV to runway nine. No SIDs or stars. Let's see if we have the there, and we want the sting transition. This is working out no other transitions and execute. I think we've done it. I think we've, I think there is success here. So SRQ, Viola Pines, RSW, Hiccup, Citag, Marcy, Rigger, Gigum, Sting, Chats, Chats. The, if you fly on VATSIM, by the way, there's one of the controllers down in um, uh, VATSIM in Florida. They just love the Chats via the waypoint. At now, bus B, runway nine, our flight plan is perfect. Life is good, let's hit the data button. Let's go over here and do init. Let's go to weights. And what we do is the airplane is loaded, but what we have to do is we have to get the weight data into the airplane itself. There's two ways to do it. You can do the math or you can hold the button down and there's your zero fuel weight, which should be exactly uh, what's on the flight plan, right? Uh, zero fuel weight, one, four, four, three, six, one, four, three, one, six. You know what? Close enough. How about fuel on board? Hold it down. One, seven, six, eight. We wanted one, seven, seven, four. Close enough. I'm not going to worry about that. It's a fun flight today. Okay. And then the last thing we do is we need our reserves. You know about reserves. It's final reserve plus alternate fuel is 760. So seven, six, zero, that goes in there and that's done. Let's go and return. So we've done our weights, we've done our flight plan. Now we're gonna do our uh, performance. And what we do here is our cruise altitude, which is 17,000 feet, one, seven, one, two, three. 17,000 feet and then our alternate and it's alternate and cruise. You're gonna find both of those together so it does say the alternate here is Miami, but if you go to page two on the Lido style of chart, it says Miami, and then over here, it gives you the cruise level you're supposed to fly to if you have to go to your alternate. 
So K M I A, then do the slash, and then we're gonna do 19,000 feet. And put that in there. Now, it usually will put your cruise altitude in immediately, but then after that, it sometimes takes a while to find your uh, alternate airport. Okay, and all of this is looking really good. Uh, the next thing for us to do is we'll go to performance and performance data, transition altitude, here's 18,000 feet, that's good. Next page, uh, mean winds. Okay, the other, another way to say mean winds is average winds. And if you're using the Lido style of charts, it's right there in the upper right hand side, 280 degrees at 12 knots. 280 degrees slash and then 12 knots and then that goes right up there. And then if you know the, uh, uh, the transition altitude for your arrival, you could plug that in there too. But we, it's 18,000 feet. So let's go previous, previous, and now pretty much that's all done. Next thing that I'll go ahead and do here is with you know getting passengers aboard, we can go ahead and uh, let's do the, uh, let's see, uh, pack one and two fault, uh, okay. Uh, I don't wanna do that. Ram air. I think I might have messed this up. Procedure completed. Okay, final cockpit preparation. Look at that, it's at the top. Let's do that checklist. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to do the, uh, I call it the copyright notice. So we're just gonna say that's good and complete. And final cockpit checklist. Uh, we're gonna go and do parking brakes are engaged. So parking brakes are engaged. Altimeters are three zero zero zero. So let's do our altimeters. Three zero zero zero, altimeters are checked and set. Landing elevation, from what I've heard, uh, if the landing elevation, which is here under the gear lever, is blank with a little blue M, that means it's set and life is good. The FMS is good, the fuel quantity, uh, and FOB, so come on over here, and just click over here, there's fuel, so 880 plus 880, uh, my brains are fried, 880, uh, times two is 1760. And if your FOB here is close, that's really, really good. Here's the thing, if you don't know, this is your actual gas gauge. This is what the flight management computer says you got. So they're two independent numbers. Uh, engine fuel used, we can go ahead and confirm our takeoff data, which we plugged in and reset fuel used, which is basically none. Memo panel has the usual suspects, power management set to takeoff, and that procedure is complete. Let's go ahead and set, uh, let's do um, hotel mode. Now then, to get hotel mode going, you've got to have hydraulic power up here. So the hydraulic power needs to be going up here, but we've already turned it on. There's this little button that's down here by the throttles. So it's right down here, and it's the hydraulic auxiliary pump, ground control only. So we're gonna click it. Let's look back up here and see, hey, look at that, the light's out. So now we can go, and we have the ready light by prop brake. We can turn on the prop brake. And that is the proper way to pressurize the prop brake. And that's your dumb joke for right now. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the wing lights. That lets the ground crew know that we are going to go into hotel mode. I'm gonna turn on the fuel pump. I'm gonna go to start A and B, and we're gonna start up engine number two. Let's look down here. Do we have engine number two is going up? At 10%, I'm gonna move. Fuel is going on. We have fuel going on. And we're gonna look over here, make sure prop brake is blue and there is no rotation of the prop. And if you go outside, you can hear the prop brake is doing the proper thing. Yes, I haven't had a chance to do any of this. I have to sit being in a jury box all, all day. 
You're not even really supposed to smile. So yes, I'm gonna do stupid jokes. Okay, so we now have this gup and running. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. That's looking really good. I think it's time to go close the doors. So closing the doors of the airplane. We've got the air conditioning going and all is right with the world there. And let's see here. I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna do um, emergency exits are armed. Turn off devices, turn on seat belts. All of that looks good to go too. Now then we have the before propeller rotation checklist, but before propeller rotation, we probably ought to push back here because we're pretty close to this jetway. So one of the things that I do is I use a little thing called pushback helper. Pushback helper just does so good for this airplane. And that's, that's just kind of the way that I've been doing this. And like I said, I think it's working great. So here comes the guy in the sled. And because it feels so good to be hanging out with you and so good to be back in the airplane just temporarily right now, I've decided to make it a beverage in the cockpit night. It doesn't have to be a booze beverage. It can be anything you want. Pour your favorite beverage, hop in your plane, fly along with me. And I think we're almost ready to go. I think we are. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do the beacon because we're gonna start rolling the airplane about. We're gonna do a cabin call. Let the cabin crew know we're gonna start rolling around too. I'm also gonna turn off the uh, lights up here. Okay, so that looks good. Let's do parking brakes off. Parking brakes are off and reverse. And nothing happens. You know why? Somebody forgot to go and do a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and turn off ground power. And that means we're now on uh, generator two. Get rid of ground power, get rid of wheel chocks. Now let's try to reverse. Oh my gosh, look at that. Almost like we know what we're doing. Almost like we know what we're doing. We'll just do kind of a straight pushback here on this one. Now I think that silver actually parks over here. I think these little things, this is where they park over here and the passengers uh, for silver go up these steps here. So the Tampa airport is really nice, but they need to uh, set up silver air uh, for this airplane. So we'll just push it back to the number three. And then we'll start our Assassin's Creed swords on the, on the, uh, on the uh, wings spinning around. That's probably pretty cool. Right nose on the three, perfect. And we'll come on in and do parking brakes. Parking brakes back on. There we go, and release the tug. And then as soon as I see the tug release, there they go, they're going away. At that point, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of uh, Pushback Helper. Pushback Helper is so cool, it's free, it's at flightsim.to. CDLs are sort of on, I'll worry about that later. FMS and takeoff data are good. Trims are not set. So trim is supposed to be 1.8. There's the Pac-Man sound. So there's 1.8. Now, the latest thing that I heard from 737NG driver and a few others is subtract three. But I think they did a little bit of report, little work on the airplane. So let's leave it at the trim setting and see what happens when we take off. Doors are closed, seat belts are on, beacon is on, the procedure is complete. It is time to go ahead and turn off the prop brake. So the beacon is already on and we're gonna go ahead and make sure, clear the prop over there. Nobody's, uh, nobody wants to be uh, uh, silver air sushi, right? That was mean, I know. All right, prop brake going off. And it says unlocked. And so we're gonna go and guard that again. And the propeller should be spinning. Oh, look at that, it's even spinning. All right, now at that point, we're gonna go ahead and take the condition lever and we're gonna move that up to auto. Condition lever goes to auto and the prop increases and it does. I think it's time for us to go ahead and turn the fuel pump on for the right left side of the airplane. 
And let's go ahead and get ready to start engine number one. Starting one. And you can see the uh, NH percent is going up. And at 10%, we introduce fuel. There goes fuel. Slide over here. We got a little bit of prop rotation coming up on this airplane, on this engine too. We wait for the engine to stabilize. And that looks really pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and do auto. Says I've got a probe he alpha heating, heater failure. That's because I haven't turned on my probes yet. But the airplane is asking probing questions and we, get, we gave it an answer. Okay, so all of those look good. This is usually when I'm gonna go ahead and do flaps to 15%. This is when I go and turn on my probe heaters. Probe heaters are going on. This is also when I'll come up here and turn on the true. And that's no lie. Hey, I've been gone. The, the, you, the jokes are gonna happen today. That's just all there is to it. And everything's looking good. Let's do before taxi checklist. FWS, recall everything is clear. Cockpit uh, comm hatch is closed. Uh, control levers are at auto, anti-ice is as required, the true is on and checked, anti-skid test. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push that button because when it comes to the anti-skid test, we don't wanna let things slide. Man, they're just gonna, I'm sorry, I've been gone, e even a couple of days have been gone too long. And the anti-skid test is good, we got an A, flaps are 15, nose wheel steering is on, procedure is good, it is taxi time. Nose light can go on. There's nose and taxi. Cabin call, let the cabin crew know that we are going to be moving the airplane around. Lock your gamer chair in, just because you really do not want to go and uh, tilt back if you have rudder pedals. So tap your brakes a few times. And that looks pretty good. Anybody over there? Nope, anybody over there? Release the brakes. The airplane usually starts rolling. Let's do a tight little turn. And out we go. Taxiway, what is it, Charlie? We'll go ahead and do Taxiway Charlie. And there we go. Nice cabin view. I guess the line is over here. Guess the line's over here. So I am uh, at thrust idle. There's our little yellow line, perfect. Okay, let's get our taxi chart set up just because I sometimes forget. Okay, there we are. So let's do Juliet, Gaul, uh, Charlie, and cross the runway. So we actually are going to go this way. That gets us over to Juliet. I bet the lights are really going to be nice tonight. Okay, that looks pretty good. I have neglected to turn on my... Um, I have neglected to turn on my uh, squawk. So that's the first thing I've forgotten. So surveillance. Okay. And let's see, how about 2000? So click in the box and then two, one, two, three, and enter. And we should squawk mode Charlie on the taxiways even though we're not on Batsim. Okay, next taxiway is Charlie. It is right turn over here. 
It's going to be interesting to see if we still need to subtract three from the trim setting for takeoff. Now, this is the uh, 42, not 72, and I've noticed that this thing really does, I mean, just ta take off like a rocket when it's taxi time. Okay, heading hold mode. We're not going to go into nav mode after takeoff. Hit the IAS button not once, but twice. That's going to put us into heading select and altitude. IAS altitude select. Pitch hold, that's the one we want for takeoff. Pitch hold is first. Okay, getting a little bit close to uh, takeoff time. Control lock goes off. Controls move. That's a good thing. Cabin crew seats for takeoff. Not much wind. Looks like it's coming from the water side. And let's do takeoff config check. Config check is not turning green. Usually it turns green about now. So what do we have? We have taxi. There is the taxi procedure, which we did. How about before? There's before takeoff. Briefing's done, gust lock, flight controls. Transponder TCAS, boost function not needed, airflow's good, cabin crews advised, engine bleed, external lights. Okay, lateral flight director bar, that's not going to uh, show up until we get out on the runway. Strobes going on. So I tried several times to do the takeoff config check and it did not config. So that's a bit of a problem. And as we slowly line up on the runway, the lateral bar or the up and down bar on the flight director should center up. And if it doesn't, then just get yourself centered up on the runway and then you'll hit your, um, you'll, uh, you'll hit the uh, uh, heading bug. That looks good. Initial climb has not been sent. Let's go ahead and climb Climb and maintain 5,000. That'll be a good start. I should have looked at my departure. 5,000, so that looks good. So lateral navigation is set, rudder cam is centered, and procedure is good. Taxi takeoff lights, I, I thought I did that. Brakes. And that procedure is good too. I think we can go, let's see what happens. So landing lights. Oh, forgot. Oh, this is probably why the takeoff config didn't work. I didn't turn my starter off. See? Man, I've been gone way too long. Let's go flying. That's the fun part, right? Parking brakes are off. Okay, throttles to the notch. Push the nose down just a touch. Power is set. 60 knots. I still have a really hard time seeing the airspeed. V1 and rotate. Positive rate gear. On your way up gear, do that nose light. On your way down from the gear, do the yaw dampers. And I usually climb a little bit too steeply. Okay, IAS, AP. Airplane's got us, let's put it in pink mode. There's pink mode for speeds. P 
pink mode is sort of like uh, manage speed in an Airbus and what it does when you hit the little button over here for auto manual on speed target, it just takes care of that for you. Flaps up. How about uh, 270 for the heading? And a nice view outside the airplane. That wasn't too rough, considering how rusty I am right now. Okay, we're just heading, how do we do on 270? Up, oh, missed it by about, okay, there's 270. I still find it kind of hard to see the instruments. Maybe I'm sitting back a little bit too far in my cockpit view, and I should zoom in and move a little bit closer maybe. I mean, it could be that that would be the better view for me. There's 270, and there's the airport, perfect. Climb and maintain 17,000. There's 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17,000. We'll just continue the climb all the way up. And let's do our next heading, 180 degrees. South, straight south. Now, chances are in the real world, they wouldn't have us go right to Sarasota VOR because that's like on the approach, you know? So, probably we would do something else. Make the map a little bigger. There's the Sarasota VOR, so we could go direct to Sarasota. Well, why not? We're flying by ourselves, So, let's do DTO. SRQ, execute, and nav. Airplanes got us. Passing 6,500 feet, climbing at 128. I've got flaps up. Why are you climbing so slow? Usually you climb a lot faster. Progress, how about performance? Could be I forgot something. IAS is set. Uh, flaps are up, right? Yeah, flaps are up. Clearly I've done something wrong because usually by now it kicks us up to 160 for the climb. Hmm, landing gear is up. Oh, because you have to put it in climb mode. You see? Man, talk about rusty, this is bad but it's so much fun. I like being back in my airplane. Flaps are zero, power management set to climb mode. Engine bleeds are on, taxi lights are off, altimeters, they will get reset and checked earlier. That's right, see, Airbus will do it automatically. Boeing will put you into cruise mode automatically. This one is not gonna be automatic. And a beautiful night to look out and see the coast. Oh my gosh, the stars at night are big and bright here in uh, Florida, it looks like. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a little change on the time though, just to do a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, sightseeing. Okay, we could turn off the logo light. So wing lights, yeah, we got those off. I thought I got the, these lights too. Guess I didn't get those off when we went, when we took off. Coming up on 10,000 feet. Almost time for landing lights. Uh-oh, forgot a few buttons up here. Power management is green. Ble uh, engine bleeds are green. So the next thing is altimeters. And here comes. Three, two, one, and, and 10,000 feet landing lights. Cabin call. Reset the heading bug. And we are out. 
Okay, really didn't forget that much today. I forgot some stuff, but not that much. And I bet the takeoff config didn't work because I didn't take my engines out of engine start. That's probably the reason why. Could be some alligators down there. We'll have to keep an eye out for those. And then it's always nice to have um, uh, Navigraph do your uh, touristy stuff so you can see where you're flying. See, I don't think we're going back to Tampa so we can get rid of the Tampa stuff and clear that. I did get the RNAV. Let's also get a taxi chart for that looks good. That looks good. There's our airport. Cool. Our charts are set. Passing 11,000 feet for 17. Now we can come over here to progress. Progress. Says we are 230 miles outside of beautiful Key West. It says an hour and 11 minutes. Estimated fuel on board is 495. So while we're in climb mode, that's usually fairly low. But once we get to our final cruising altitude, that EFOB uh, number, in fact is it's already climbing. So it climbs along with you. And then when you get to your cruising altitude, all of a sudden you'll look at that and say, oh wow, that's what it's supposed to be which is your alternate and reserve fuel. Passing 113. And looking outstanding. And a beautiful sunset out on the horizon. Somebody put a change log up for us. Let's see, where is that change log? Okay, I believe this is the change log for the airplane. Distance to destination got fixed, direct to waypoint. Uh, all sorts of fixes here, McDo fixes. So they do call it a McDo in this airplane. Fixed modified cruise altitude behavior. Fixed marketplace thumbnail sizes. Icing message didn't disappear. Added a boost option for the electronic checklist. Flight plan preposition. McDo clear color. Added a timeout for flashing select LNAV button. Fixed an issue which caused flight idle to be too high. Light switches, we saw that at the beginning of the flight. Fixed manual in route holding, that's good. You know, I haven't tried to do a hold yet in this airplane, that's something to do. The GPWS lighting switch, fix the ITT for running engines, fix top of this. Look at the fixed list, this is really extensive. Uh, I'll put a link to this uh, page into uh, chat too. So into the description, you'll find a link and there's a mic there. Uh, I'll put that in there so that you can see all of this. But I mean, I'm gonna say this is a pretty extensive list. Fixed NexRad overlay visible on terrain view. Ooh, weather radar, NexRad's weather radar. Autopilot disconnect sound playing in cold and dark. I didn't hear that one. So I think there's all sorts of really, really great, um, really, really great uh, updates. Up oh, coming up on cruise. So let's see here. We are coming up on Sarasota. The arrival altimeter is 2998. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do 2998 right now as our final cruising altitude. 
and altimeters are checked and set. And so we'll have it hold it hold us at that altitude for where we are. Vatsim would be giving us al, uh, uh, would be giving us other altitudes. And there goes the speed coming up, so we're coming out of cruise mode, uh, out of climb mode, so we'll switch to cruise mode. And it should settle into 17,000 feet and put the speed right up about 210 or so. Uh, that's one of the things I like about this airplane. We are 156 miles away from top of descent. Estimated fuel on board is doing just what it's supposed to, climbing up if you look at your flight plan and come over here and see uh, final reserve and alternate, 760 is what that should settle into. Usually it needs maybe a checkpoint, you know, into cruise. So maybe after Sarasota, we'll get a little, the computer has a chance to update itself. And our speed's still climbing up there too. Let's go ahead and do seatbelts. Oh, and we'll also do uh, devices. Let people uh, do uh, iPads and stuff. 17,000 feet, that looks pretty good. Speed continues to climb. Estimated fuel on boards climbing. I'd say life is pretty good. So generally what I do uh, over here on YouTube uh, for a complete flight like this is I will go and uh, hit pause on the recording until we're about 50 miles from top of descent. So if you're flying along with me, uh, go ahead and hit pause on the player. And when your airplane gets to be about 50 miles from top of descent, you can go and hit start and we'll do the approach together and land and enjoy our Pixel airplanes. And so that should be pretty good. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be back in a sim cockpit now. And a beautiful sunset and it looks like the updates on the airplane are really pretty good. See you 50 miles from top of descent. Well, I guess that makes 50 nautical miles to top a descent. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for sticking around. The flight has been absolutely beautiful. We have a beautiful sunset too. I've adjusted the time a little bit because I really just needed to see a really nice sunset here. But as we take a look here, you can see the approach. There's our top of descent. Uh, I did go and get an updated uh, METAR. So the weather right now at Key West is wonderful. Variable winds at just three knots. Uh, 10 miles visibility, clear skies, beautiful evening. The altimeter 3001. Because we're below 18,000 feet, I've already gone and updated my altimeter. As far as the approach, it's an RNAV approach. so. Uh, we don't have an ILS or anything to worry about coming on in here to charts. Just a quick look here as we look on in. We're going to come in via Sting. After that, it's Chets, Atna, and Busby. Uh, altitudes, we want to be 1,500 feet at Busby. And minimums for the, for the approach here, about 253 feet or so. So it's 425 on a LNAV, VNAV type of approach too. Now I generally don't use VNAV on an airplane like this, including the, the CRJ. I just kind of pr prefer to do my own thing, especially with an older airplane. And you know, uh, they're still making these airplanes, but it's still kind of got that A310 clunkiness to it. So I generally like to manage my own descent. That being said, I do, um, you know, I will uh, use the guidance going down quite a bit, and that seems to work out pretty good. So we're uh, 40 miles out. Uh, we're going to assume that uh, ATC has come, called in and said to send a pilot's uh, discretion uh, to uh, pass. Let's see, what would they be saying? They would probably be saying uh, to pass at not uh, 1,500 feet they would probably step us down because ATC generally steps you down and stuff like that. So, but we're just gonna go ahead and go to 1,500 feet at Atna. It's 3,000 feet from Sting to Chats. And, that, and, and so we should be able to do that. 
No real constraints to worry about. We just got a nice, gentle approach coming on in. The weather should be absolutely outstanding. I'm actually hoping for, you know, maybe a decent landing. It'd be kind of nice, I think. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the rest of the airplane is just in absolutely great shape. It is so nice uh, after my week to uh, be back in this airplane. Uh, let's see here, passenger signs are off. Uh, one of the things is, is we've got two of them here. So if you turn on devices, let's see what this does to devices. Usually that would turn on both the signs. Let's see. Again, this is a small, yeah, it does turn on both. So devices turn on both. Uh, turn off your cell phones and fasten seat belts. So uh, basically these two, uh, let's see what seat belts does. We'll turn off devices and do seat belts. And seat belts turns on too. So basically either one of them, it's not one or the other. So that's the way that works. I think that's, that's small time stuff, but it's a cabin thing. We're flight sim nerds, we're airplane nerds. We like to go and check. So there you go. We are 32 miles from top of descent. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my 1,500. So just dialing this down to, the numbers are still really small. Again, I think maybe I am positioning myself wrong in the airplane and maybe I'm seated back just a little bit too far. Okay, there is 1,500 feet. We're uh, altimeter 3001, so that's good too. 29 miles from top of descent. Nothing really to worry about as far as frequencies or anything like that. So we'll just come on in. Uh, important safety tip, if you've never done the arrival here in uh, Key West, remember here at Key West, there is also a Naval Air Station just beyond. So, you know, generally you don't, if you're flying a civilian airplane, you don't want to land at the Naval Air Station. They get cranky about those sorts of things. In the real world, we're in the sim world here. You can do whatever you want in the sim world, but if you're trying to make it as real as it gets, there you go. No auto brakes, no speed brakes to set up or anything like that. Life is all good up here. Uh, let's see, uh, we'll go ahead and leave seat belts and signs off for a little bit longer and, and devices off. Nothing to worry about down there. I have been monitoring fuel. You can see that uh, EFOB is now 800. Remember uh, the flight plan, final reserve and alternate was supposed to be 760. So we're in really good shape as far as fuel's concerned. So we don't have to worry about that. Life is essentially good. Um, I did, uh, while we were, uh, while I had the, uh, the, the video on pause and stuff, I did go and look back at the change log. And one of the things they had in there was that, you know, nose pulls up a little bit too early on takeoff and stuff like that. So what I did is I'm kind of assuming that, you know, for takeoff trim, remember how a 737NG driver was saying, drop your trim down by about three tenths of a point when you're setting your trim for takeoff. We set it normal. It was okay. I still think that it kind of lifted up a little bit soon. On the other hand, I have a real hard time seeing the speed tape for takeoff. I don't know if the developers have any de desire to do this, but if the developers wanted to do a 80 knots V1 and rotate, you know, have those kind have a co-pilot sound, I think that would be really really awesome for this airplane. That would be, you know, a cool thing to do. It happens that way in the uh, uh, PMDG 737s. That way, you know, you, you, you can, the pilot controlling the airplane gets to look out down the runway, being able to look down here and says, okay, did we really get, no, we're not at V1 yet. Oh, we're off to the side over there, that kind of thing. So that's the way I would generally do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a click here of the map. I generally start to zoom it in a little bit. We could come down here to the nav page and at nav, we could go to the ND overlay, go nav aids, airports and terrain. 
terrain's gonna make it a little hard to see some of that. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that quite yet. But that's really cool to have. And we are 13 miles from top of descent. So for me, what I do for top of descent, again, maybe this is just me being a bit of a control freak, but I'm gonna go and hit IAS descend, pull my throttles back. Sorry, I'm whacking the mic all the time. Uh, and then I'm gonna readjust my speed down to about 210 knots. I'll, I'll take it essentially out of pink mode or managed mode, and I'm gonna manage my own speed going down. 11 miles from top of descent. Let's see, I should have also switched my traffic over to normal over here on the ND overlay. So especially if you're on VATSIM, you can do above, normal, and below for uh, TCAS, keeping an eye out on other airplanes. really been enjoying this airplane. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to learn. I actually am one of those that likes the shorter hops because there's more to do. I mean, I still do long hauls, you know, cross the pond and stuff. But generally, I, um, you know, this is great for short little hops. And the other cool thing is uh, in, uh, you know, Silver Airlines is flying this thing all over Florida and parts of the Caribbean. Logan Air is flying this airline. Uh, I believe Olympic is flying this airplane around um, the, the Aegean Sea, you know, doing some of the, some of those things. I think uh, they're, uh, it's flying around, somebody said either Norway or Finland, I forget which one. So there are, and, and th that's what I know about. I'm sure other people are flying it too. And I think it's great to be able to have an airplane that is actually being used and probably gonna be used for a while. As opposed to, hey, we just got a brand new airplane. Guess what? They're getting ready to retire it. Okay, so here we are. You can see that we've got descent deviation showing up here. So I'm gonna go out of, um, out of uh, pink mode and I'm gonna drop the speed down and I'm gonna put it just right on top of our speed. So we're 223. We are one mile from top of descent. And so usually when we get to about one mile, this is the perfect time to hit the IAS button and pull the power back just a little bit here. And down we go. I'm gonna adjust my speed down now because I wanted to go down about 220. So 220 for the descent. You can see my descent deviation starting to tick down a little bit. I'm gonna pull it back just a touch more so that I can go ahead and try and keep my uh, descent deviation indicator as centered as I can. My sense of humor is deviant enough. I don't want my descents to be deviant. So there you go. There we go, that's actually looking pretty good. Man, if the rest of my flying was as good as my uh, descent deviation, it would be great. And look at that, just perfect. I'm going to strobe the clock back just a little bit more here. Just a touch for a nice sunset arrival. Okay, we are, our descent is just perfect for the moment. Passing 15,000 feet, let's go ahead and do devices and seat belts. Do a cabin call. Life is good here. There's a descent, FWS recall is clear. Landing elevation's been checked. FMS, nav and perf. Okay, we gotta do the uh, uh, performance. So performance, the altimeter here is 3001. So 30.01. There we go, that's good. Transition's 18,000 feet. Winds are variable at virtually nothing. So zero, slash zero, slash zero. Oh, gotta get the slash in there. So that's uh, wind direction, wind speed, and gusts. Nothing, nothing, and nothing. And so all those three are set, and this is giving us a VAP approach. So approach speed is 100 knots. 
Uh, let's see, decision height. We figured our decision height, we're gonna make that 253 feet. So 253 there. So it's gonna be about 250 is about as good as we're gonna do. And then you see it's flashing over here. You've gotta go over to the co-pilot side and you have to reset this one over to MDA2. And now life is perfect there. So 220 knots on the descent and life is pretty good here. I'm pulling my power back just a touch more and it looks like Key West is ahead of us here. So FMS is set, decision height is set, arrival briefing has been done, but rather poorly. Next is the approach checklist. I'm gonna just go ahead and pop that up and have that ready to go. The one thing that I think that I'd like to see is the uh, takeoff checklist. Now maybe they fixed it and it does pop up a little bit sooner, but I'd like to see that pop up by itself a little bit sooner. Again, I think I screwed up because I had my engine start on, duh. And that's why, because I found that in other flights, when I hit the takeoff config test button and it's green, that's when my checklist shows up. So, I don't know. It could be that that's the way it is. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring my map in a click. And we can start to see outside the uh, windows here a bit. Ah, Key West. Never been there, of course, but would love to go there someday. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling my speed down a little bit. So I'm gonna get my target speed down to 210. Now the deviation is gonna change a little bit, but it generally rebounds. So I don't panic too much when I go. And I generally will start reducing it in, you know, 10 knots here, 10 knots there. Unless of course ATC is telling me to do something different, then I'll try and do what ATC wants me to do. And you can see our descent is still going really good. And reset that heading bug. I did go and do a step-by-step -step, uh, checklist uh, one of my own and uh, it's a text file and uh, if you're over on the discord link in the description I will tell you that uh, you can go get that over on the checklist page and just take it and use it I think it's pretty much what it is that we want want it to be so it seems to be you know it's I there's probably a few things that need to be updated I generally update it every uh, few weeks or so as an airplane is slowly emerging and they're uh, swatting bugs and stuff like that. Hey, looks like uh, airport's out there. And what's super cool is, you know, this is actually a route that Silver uh, actually flies. So I think that's pretty neat. 10 miles out, I'm gonna reduce my speed another 10 knots. So 200, slowly reducing it down means I can do a jet, jet, gradual descent. I might need to pull my power back just a little bit more. And another 10 knots, so there's 190. And I'm also gonna start looking around here so I can start getting visual. It's also a great time if you're like me and you kinda get comfortable in the chair and stuff like that to straighten up so that you can go and do your um, rudder pedals if you've got them so you can reach the controls. If you've got a beverage in the cockpit like I do, um, make sure that on landing and stuff, perhaps you set it a little bit away from any button that you might wanna push in your cockpit because you know while you're landing and you're a busy camper and stuff like that you might end up um, you know knocking it over into your uh, into your um, keyboard and that's not good I just touched my throttle forward a little bit we were getting a slight bit low 
I'm letting the airplane do all the work. This is a work intensive airplane. Um, and, and it's meant for two people. So especially when you're flying something like this on VATSIM, I, you know, no shame in letting the autopilot do the work for you, especially if you're in an airplane this on VATSIM. Another thing I like to do is brief myself on the arrival. So we're coming in on runway nine. That gives us, uh, usually the Alpha 3 is what we're gonna be able to uh, come in on. And then uh, there's uh, all sorts of gates here in the terminal area. This is probably one of those ones where you're gonna do, you know, pull in and then circle around because the door is in the back of the airplane. And then usually what I like to do is with this map, as soon as I've got everything done with VATSIM, with uh, my, my arrival charts and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and start zooming this way in and this is gonna be my ground chart for taxi because I've got everything here. Let's do another 10 knots here, so 180. And that way we're uh, 180 is we're getting close to being able to do our 90 degree turns here. We're at 6,000 feet right now. We have to, all we have to do is be above 1,500 at Atna. That's all we have to do. So we're in pretty good shape here. And usually as you're starting your turn to final, that's when ATC is going to pop online and say, uh, you know, join the localizer or, you know, turn to final, um, you know, 180 knots until five miles DME is usually what they will tell you. So this is perfect. And we're doing pretty good. Might need a little bit of power here. Did we do lights? Nope, let's go ahead and get those landing lights on and ready to go. And a cabin call, we're uh, gonna land here. So everything else is looking good. Logo, wing, strobe, everything is great. Now I pushed the throttles a little bit too far back and we were getting a little bit on the high side here. And start looking for your runway. Up oh, there it is, got it. Not this one, that's the Naval Air Station. There's the commercial airport. You want the one that's closest to you uh, when you're uh, landing uh, to the east. Reset that heading bug. Getting ready to make a turn here. I'm still letting the airplane do the work, reducing my speed to 170. Flaps. And checklist, seat belts, landing lights, altimeters, cabin altitude is good, procedures complete, before landing checklist. Cabin crew's been advised, landing gear is not down in three green. We are now 10 mile finals and 170 knots. I'm gonna reduce it just a little bit more on my descent. There's 160. And then we can start throwing out some more flaps. How about landing gear? Gear going down. Here comes our wheels. Usually as that happens, that adds a little more drag in the airplane. So we're gonna add a little bit of power here so we can keep our descent rate. And how about another 10 knots? There's 150 and we should be able to go and do another, um, another notch of flaps. Over here on the checklist, landing gear is down three green and there comes our speed down there's another notch flaps gently put your feet on the rudder pedals sit back in your chair make sure you can grab your controls refresh your memory on uh, landing speed 100 knots And there's 1,500 feet. We're a little on the high side right now, but we're doing pretty good. So we're almost to Busby. One last click of this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the power back a little bit more. So we go down a little bit more because we wanna be right at 1,500 feet at Busby. And we're, about, we're a little on the high side right now. Imagine that, high and fast. Welcome to, the, welcome to the spy flight. Glad to see that things are the same. I think flaps, I'm gonna check that out. Power management, we're gonna go over here, 
to uh, take off. True low speed, icing, external lights, procedure is good. Landing checklist is good too. We are at Busby. We are about 4,000 feet high. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this just a little bit more. There's 140. And we can pull a little more power here. And AP is off, captain's got the airplane. And if you do it just before the airplane levels off on something like this, then if you're right where you want to be, your airplane has already kind of trimmed itself up for your approach, so you don't have to worry about too much. But you might need a no little bit of nose up trim or something, depending upon how you like to do the approach. Another notch flaps. And this airplane, it's, I call it the Pac-Man sound. I see four white lights, so we're still a tad bit high. That's okay. Passengers like it when you dive down and stuff. I think I see one red light now, so we're starting to catch up with the descent. Let's pull the nose up a little bit, add a little bit of power. Flaps are full. And our speed is right around 117, so we're a little bit fast, that's okay. It's an older airplane, so I don't like to be right on that landing speed. But you see what happened, you know, I went in to check my speed there, and, and you end up getting off course and stuff, so not being able to see those numbers is kind of hard. I'm sure that the display is accurate. Approaching minimum. Okay, now it's yelling at me. My speed's a little low. Now we're high again. Minimum. Landing. Minimum. It's probably an alligator on the runway too. There's one red light. 100. Two red lights. 50. 40, 30, 20, 10. Reverse. 368. Reversers are stowed. Coast out. Somebody, and as usual, I always forget to do that nose light. When you drop your landing gear, that's when you also just do that nose light, nose wheel light. Minus 368. Uh, nothing ever changes, but it's still so much fun. Okay, set your uh, clot, your chrono. You need three minutes of cool down time on your engine. And I'm just letting it kind of roll out here. Pop the flaps up, I guess. Still leaving the airplane lit up like a Christmas tree until we get off the runway. And there's our taxiway. Off the runway, so strobes, landing lights. Now, I believe the current uh, map has this, uh, everybody just doing straight in parking here. I think the scenery though has us doing uh, looping around and stuff. There's a minute and change. So no big rush to get to your parking stand here. And there's the Key West Terminal. And 
And how about if we turn this way, that way passengers can just get right out here. That's probably pretty good. Parking brakes. And we're still waiting for a few minutes here. So we're gonna do transponder to standby. How's the clock? 207, I think that's close enough for simulator work. So we're gonna go ahead and do engine number one. Engine number one is gonna go down to um, um, uh, feather. We'll also do the control lock. And then you're supposed to, after feather, you do 30 seconds on the engine. And then after 30 seconds on the engine, uh, you need to go and do cut off. And at that point in time, you can also go and do feather on engine number two. And as that's starting to spin on down, get ready with your um, uh, um, propeller brake. And it's going to go to green or blue, I guess, is a cyan or something. So prop brake is engaged. And you can look into the cockpit and see that it's zero. And when the pop, prop brake is zero, it's not spinning. But do turn your wing lights on to let the ground crew know that everything, that there is a uh, uh, hotel mode. Oh, we also turn off the uh, probe heaters. Come on over here. Ground power can plug in. Cargo. Main door. And look at that, we made it. How about that? I've got to tell you, like I've been saying, this airplane has really, really been growing on me. I've been really enjoying it. I think that there is an awful lot of cool stuff under the hood that we don't know about. One of the things is, is uh, some people are commenting about the airplane about documentation. You know, the developers put so much cool stuff in this airplane and didn't tell us where to find it. And that's, uh, that's kind of the thing. So my hope is, is um, you know, as we go on, we learn more and more and find out that this is really just a rocking little airplane. And I've been, as I said, I've been enjoying it for quite a while. Volanta is not gonna say you've com completed the flight until you take the airplane out of hotel mode. So you ought to complete it yourself. And as you look on down here, I've been really concentrating I whine an awful lot about my, um, about my uh, landing rate, but what's really important here is, did I touch down where I was supposed to? And you can see I touched down a little bit early. And on a short runway like this, I generally will touch down a little bit early. Yes, I would like my landing rate to be much sm smaller than 306, but if I can get uh, myself where I'm supposed to be, on the target then that's kind of the thing that uh i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out and generally i'm starting to do that so maybe i'll eventually get just a little bit better once again my flights over here on youtube this is what works for me it's not about the right way versus the wrong way it's what works and what's fun and i hope you are having as much fun uh with this airplane as i am really excited that they're continuing to update it can't wait to see what they do with it next and i am just absolutely enjoying uh flying this uh all over the place too um as i uh, usually like to say about now uh, i am still relatively new here on youtube so i read all the comments all the suggestions and if you've got a suggestion i'll even do a complete cold and dark flight for you over here on youtube Huge big thank you, a huge big thank you to um, the, uh, uh, the subscribers over on Twitch. Thank you for the incredible support. And also the secret agents, the special agents and double O's over on Patreon. I do uh, flight briefings every morning before the spy flight uh, over on Patreon. And I can't say thank you enough to the secret agents, special agents and double O's. Also a huge thank you. A uh, few people are also doing some support over on Kofi. So uh, thank you so much for all of that. You absolutely are the jet fuel in the flight plan. And thank you so much for being here. I've still got to go and do this jury duty for a while and I really, really, really miss flying with you on Twitch. But as soon as it's done, I will see you over there. In the meantime, as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and I can't wait to see you in the friendly sim skies. Cheers. <laughs>